Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm excited for today's video. So today's Monday, which in Australia is Game of Thrones Day and I'm excited for episode three. Um, but I'm testing out this today. So this is the Game of Thrones Urban Decay Vault. Um, if you're in Australia, this hasn't actually released yet. It's releasing this Thursday. Um, but I have heard that we're not getting the vault. So I'm not sure about that. Usually when Mecca talk about releases, they, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a lot of misinformation going around. So I don't know, but um, Haley and I picked this up one each from Selfridges. So we ordered this about two weeks ago. Uh, it did cost a pretty penny, but the reason I ended up going for the vault was because I was tossing up between, do I get the eyeshadow palette and three lipsticks and three eyeliners and this and that and a brush and whatever, and the brushes weren't available individually. And when I was sort of totaling it up, it ended up being that the vault was just a little bit more expensive than buying everything that I wanted anyway. So this is a pretty expensive vault. It's 250 US dollars on Selfridges. I think it was like 295 Australian dollars plus tax so it came to 300 and something so let's just have a quick look what's inside the vault um, i haven't actually used this so it's going to be my first time using it but um we did do a swatch video on uh beauty news so that's already live so if you wanted to see everything sort of swatched and looked at really in close detail I'm going to direct you there because I'm not going to swatch these today. I'm just going to apply them. And in that video, we talk a little bit more about, you know, things in this that were a little bit disappointing um, from some like broken packaging through to the brush being a little bit frayed. Um, I am in the process of fixing that. We sort of straightened it out once. I'm going to do it again, but it's looking a lot better. So if you came here for more swatches, check it out on that video. I'll link it in the description box because I'm not going to do it again, but I will very quickly run through what the full collection contains. Not all countries are going to get the full collection though. So, you know, if you really like these brushes, for example, I heard they're not coming to all countries. I don't think they're coming to Australia, but once again, it's hard to tell until they actually have been released, but um, you've got two brushes with the sword handles. Um, it's kind of cute, very expensive. People have wondered, are these metal? They are metal, which is good because they're expensive. We've got the massive eyeshadow palette that looks like a book. I will be using this today. So um, if you open it up, it does have a mirror that's not the most practical mirror. And then if you lift this up, it's got a pop-up throne. So it looks like that. That's not even where the palette is though. The palette is in the side, um, in a drawer. I did say in the video, the beauty news video that I wish, this looks really big compared to my head. Uh, I did say that I wish this came with its own covering so you can put this away for safe safekeeping, but it doesn't. So it has to slide in and out of that drawer like that. I will be using that today. There's also the Mother of Dragons highlighter palette. This is probably my least favorite thing from the whole collection. I just think it's a little bit uninspired and boring, but I'll be using that. There are four lipsticks. So these are Vice lipsticks and they're named after characters in the show. Um, I might do a lip swatch of all of these sort of towards the end. There's a red lip and cheek stain. This I might use on my cheeks. Um, I have had a request to use it on my lips but I want to use the lipsticks, so I'm not going to do that. And I know one of the lipsticks at least is quite sheer, so I don't want this underneath. So um, I'll be putting that on my cheeks. Then lastly, and arguably, in my opinion, the most exciting things are the liners. Um, these are all sort of glittery or shimmery liners. And one is this sort of iridescent blue shimmer. It's really, really, really unique. It almost has like a clear base to it but it's got like blue iridescent shimmer that one's called winterfell snow and we've got dragon smoke which is like a blackened purple with purple and pink shimmer i think like sparkle in it this is probably the one that i'm least excited about because it looks really cool swatched um it does sort of capture the light and there's like sparkle in there but you almost need to cover a really large area of your eye to see that so unless you want to cover your whole eye in this pencil you probably won't see the effect um, we also have the night king which is a beautiful teal mine actually broke while we were swatching it so it's a little bit blunt but i'll use that anyway and probably my favorite one is lannister gold it's like a really metallic pewter 
silvery gold color. It's quite unique and really, really pretty. So I'm gonna to try to use as many of these as possible um, in this look. All right, I'm gonna start with the eyeshadow palette because um, I have no idea what I'm gonna do on my eyes and I'm really curious. These all have sort of uh, qu uh, quints. So that's like Winterfell, that's more like The Wall, The Night's Watch, White Walkers. Um, this one is more Lannister themed and that one is Targaryen themed. So they all have sort of themes. I really like this one. I don't want to just do um, an eye look based on one house. So I sort of want to just pick from a bunch. Um, and I'm thinking I'm going to have to use this blue um, because the there's two liners that are blue. So I feel like it makes sense to use a blue. And I feel like I look like I've got really bad bags today. That is sometimes when you use translucent powder on concealer, it darkens a concealer. Shame on you. So I'm going to have to probably fix it up later. But I'm just going to start with House Lannister, which is a matte peach. The cat is running around like a crazy. Um, this is a really soft peach. It's very powdery. Uh, when you pick it up and I'm just picking up a smallest amount just to sort of set my base that I've already put on This is just a NARS um, I don't know primer in I think it's the shade light so that just adds a little bit of Peachiness on the same brush. I'm going in with Lannister red, which is like a burgundy sort of red color This brush is probably a bit too big. I didn't realize this was going to be quite so pigmented and pick up quite so much product all right, on this eye, I made the mistake of applying too much and it just doesn't blend the best uh, if you apply too much. So on this eye, I'm going to just build it up slowly, which I think is gonna be a lot better if you want to blend it a bit more smoothly. So these are quite pigmented mattes, uh, especially it seems the darker colors. So just be careful with that. So this is still a little bit hard to get a nice blend. It does sort of gather in certain areas. So I don't know, this this one, I don't, I don't know. You gotta be careful with it. It's very pigmented, but it's not the most blendable. All right, one shade that I've been really interested in is Dothraki, which is sort of like, I don't know, it's, it's almost, it's a gold metallic shimmer shade. It's very like true sort of citrusy yellow gold. Um, almost a bit green. So I'm just going to apply some of that with my finger because it is one of those chunkier formulas that almost need to be warmed up to apply smoothly on the eye, but it's, it's very effective. This is the kind of shade that probably if you wanted to grip with a brush, probably a glitter glue would hold this really well. In the outer corner of that with the same brush, I'm just blending a little bit of weirwood leaves, which is like a blackened plum with a it's a, it's got a sheen it's more of a satin finish it's not like a pure shimmer you could use this sort of um in the crease if you wanted to just you know smoke something up blend out a liner i just like having a sort of dark color especially these i really like these dark purple shades to deepen these sort of uh golds and reds oh i've got ombre going on with my nails it's one of those uh thermal polishes it's a gel polish this hand is cold however this one is warm all right so i'm sort of going warm on the top and i'm going to go cooler and blues on the lower lash line i do really want to go in with winterfell uh, which is one of those sparkly cool bronze colors cool bronzy gold these sparkly shades once again they're kind of chunky um they're in some palettes there's one in the naked reloaded there's one in the naked three my cat is eating a cactus and sneezing bookie stop doing that please don't bite the cactus sir anyway i'm just going to apply this on uh just the inner part the middle part of the lid because i think this is going to give yeah it's a really pretty shimmery effect yeah that gives a very very pretty sparkly finish there is fallout even with my finger so it is a very chunky shade um, I just really like it because these are the colors I really love. I love these sort of cool tone bronze golds. So even though it's got fallout, I still want to use it. I think it's very pretty. If you did want to avoid fallout, um, you could just do your base second and clean up before you do that. I just brushed some of it away and you can see a little bit of sparkle left, but it's not, not the worst thing in the world. All right, time for the bottom. And I'm going to start with Bend the Knee, which is in the... Uh, Targaryen 
section. This is like a light purple with a blue iridescence and it's very pretty, but it's more like a topper shade. So uh, once again, if you want a really impactful effect, this would be cool over a black or a dark shade um, or you apply it maybe wet. Um, I'm kind of okay just having it soft at the moment because I'm going with some other shades. One of the most interesting shades to swatch is Frozen North from the top uh, quint. This is a beautiful shimmery sort of turquoisey, no, aqua blue, I guess. Uh, it is gorgeous. It applies gorgeously. This would be great as a liner. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't use this everywhere, but that would be quite a bold look indeed. So I'm just applying this really lightly. I'm trying to sort of blend it a little bit with that bend the knee shade. Um, and I will also finish a lot of this off with some of those liners. There is a liner that matches this shade. It's gorgeous. And there's sort of a liner that matches that inner shade. So I'm going to put that in and make it pop. And just in the outer corner of that, I want to do the site, which is from the Stark section. I'm just blending that green a little bit um, up into the corner. I am using the same brush, so there's a little bit of blue on this. So it just blends quite nicely uh, just to, you know, try some more color. I don't know if you can see the green so much because the blue is very, very bold. All right, I've just rubbed some of that blue off. I've got some more of that green and I'm just going to put that in the outer corner where the plum was. So hopefully it blends a little bit nicely and you can see the green. There's a little bit of fallout, just a bit. And just with a clean brush, I'm sort of just blending some of those together. The purple's gone, sad days. All right, there is a bit of mess going on. I've tried to clean it up a bit, but I might go in with some concealer later and just fix that up a little bit. Um, this is a mishmash of colors. Let's try to see if we can fix it with the liners, shall we? All right, first I'm using that Dragon Smoke shade, which is like, it's like a blackened plum. I'm just gonna do a traditional sort of winged liner on the top. All right, this look is looking crap. I firstly, I'm really bad at using pencil liners, especially really sort of creamy thick ones to do a line. I just don't like it. I like liquid liners or gel liners, but I wanted to point out if you swatch it, you can see the sparkle in it. If you just apply it to the eye, it just sort of looks like a blackened purple. I'm gonna smudge that out a little bit with some eyeshadow because I really don't like the effect of pencil liners. It is what it is, but I wanted to try it. So I'm just using some of that Weirwood Leaves shade just to sort of blend that in and smudge it out a little bit so it doesn't look so badly applied. All right, now I'm going in with Lannister Gold and this is a really gorgeous shade. Hopefully you can see there, it's like, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. I'm going to put that just on the inner corner at the top. That is, that's gorgeous. You can't see it as well on camera. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous, very, very cool toned gold. I love it. I can imagine reaching for this as an inner corner highlight. I can imagine reaching for this um, in my waterline to sort of brighten it, but not make it too light. I think this is a gorgeous, just even on the middle part of your lid to add a pop. It's really, really pretty. I think this is a, a winning pencil. Lannister Gold, I love you. Now for the other two pencils. So this one, uh, the Knight's King is that same sort of teal shimmery shade as the one I put on the lower lash line, which is why I put that on the lower lash line. I wanted to pair them together. And this is how I prefer to use pencils. I like putting them on my waterline, which looks rad or even smudging them on my lower lash line. And these colors pair perfectly. So if you if you love that blue shade and you've got, you know, the palette and you wanna pair something with it, the liner is glorious. And then lastly, we have Winterfell Snow, which is that sort of white translucent one with that sort of blue iridescence. It's very unusual. I'm just gonna pop that in the inner corner so, oh, well, that's actually really cool. Probably can't see this as well on camera, but it just adds that sort of iridescent blue pop. It's mixing a lot with that blue eyeshadow though and sort of dragging it in. So it's just more of a topper shade, but it's kind of really interesting. Like I can't imagine reaching for this too often, but even just dotting it over like 
some of the eyeshadow to add some more sparkle. Kind of looks really cool. I do think some of the most unique parts of this collection are the liners. I really like the liners. You can even see when that's not focusing on my eye, focus on the pencils. You can see in the background the iridescence that I've got going on thanks to um, Winterfell Snow. It looks really, really cool. And even though I don't like the effect of them on the top lash line, because I just don't like the look of pencil liners there, um, I think for waterline, I think pops of inner corner, these are really fun colors, even the blackened sort of purpley one, which has that kind of sheen. I'm actually gonna go in with a liquid liner because I just don't like the effect of that. So I'm just gonna sharpen it up a bit and be back. All right, we're slightly cleaned up and it's looking a lot better. It was looking a bit of a dog's breakfast before. So I did clean up under my eyes with a bit of concealer because I did have a bit of fallout. And even before I started, I had a bit of discoloration from the concealer powder combination I was using. So I just tidied that up. Um, I think having a black winged liner, I just used my Benefit Roller Lash and I used my Hourglass, uh, what is it, Caution Mascara. Um, I think this really helps the look come together. I haven't put any lashes on. So before I move on, I do want to recap what I think about the eyeshadows and the liners really quickly. Um, firstly, I do like this look. I think this look was looking like pretty shit before I put the liner and the mascara on, but it's sort of come together pretty nicely. I think the blue applied beautifully. That was definitely the best eyeshadow that I applied today. Um, and I think, you know, the one that I put in here that I covered with the liner, um, that applied quite sheerly, but it was very pretty. Um, the matte was a little bit patchy, but it was nicely pigmented. Um, the sort of gold that I put with my finger is chunky and had fallout, but it's a really beautiful effect. So none of these are perfect except for maybe the blue, but they are all very usable. Um, it's just about finding the right technique for the right shadow. There's nothing bad about these shadows. Um, I think the color combination I used could have gone bad really quickly. Um, so I'm glad that it came together. With the liners, I really like the liners. They're very creamy. Um, and the problem with creamy, I don't like it on the top lash line. As you can see, I covered it up. But the blue on the waterline was beautiful. Um, the Lannister gold is very unique and really, really gorgeous. The iridescent one is really fun. Um, and you can put it over the top of other sort of eyeshadows just to sort of give that iridescent blue color. Um, I like them. I wouldn't use them as a normal liner because that's not my personal preference, um, but they worked well and they all have interesting finishes. So it's not the best eyeshadow palette in the world, but it's definitely not the worst. And I just touched on some of these shades. Um, you could definitely go more icy and black and smoky and really like ham up that blue, which I really love that blue. Um, you could go more browns. I just touched on these a little bit, touched on that a little bit. Uh, you can go more warm. I didn't even touch this color here. I didn't touch that bronze. I didn't touch that yellow. Or you can put in more sort of, um, this is a really beautiful sort of peachy gold. Um, and that's more like a shimmery pink topper. Um, there's more purple. So, you know, there are, there's a lot of variation here that I did not even try. So, so it's not the best eyeshadow formula in the world, but it's definitely not the worst. It's very usable. That shade probably performed the best out of the ones I used. All right, now onto the cheek stain and I don't like cheek stains. I just, I think the problem is that I have, um, I usually use matte foundations that sit on the skin and then I usually powder them. So these just don't really work for my daily sort of makeup wear and my preferences similar to how like the normal liners don't work for me um, as like a wing liner. Um, but I'm going to use this anyway. I'm just going to use it as a blush. I tried not to set my cheeks, but I'm using a foundation that is demi matte. It is what it is. So if you had more balmy, um, foundations and you like really dewy foundations that stay sort of movable, you might like stains a lot more than I do. Or if you don't wear foundation, you just like a bit of color to your natural cheeks. I've got so much redness in my cheeks, I don't need a stain. So I'm going to just apply some to this palette. Um, I'm not doing it on the back of my hand because I don't want a sort of red mark on the back of my hands all day, but it comes in a dropper form. So it looks like that. And the way that I personally like to use cream or liquid products is with a duo fiber brush. This one's by Ella Cosmetics. So I'm just going to pick that up really lightly on the brush and just apply it lightly. I'm just scared that it's going to lift my foundation because that's what they usually do. 
So I'm going to be very light handed with it. So it's definitely giving a bit of a flush, nothing too major. But like I said, I'm just being very, very delicate with it because um, liquid products can really lift set foundations. And like I said, I didn't try to set my cheeks, but these foundations tend to set themselves. So that actually worked not badly. Um, it's definitely functional. And if you do have set makeup, it's still functional. It's just probably not your preferred method of blush. Um, one thing I did want to mention about this that I was impressed with when we did swatch it in the swatch video was that this stays liquidy and um, it doesn't set really quickly. So when I think of something like the Benefit cheek and lip stains, you literally just put them on your face and by the time you reach for your brush to blend it out, it's already started setting and it looks patchy. Whereas this one gives you a lot more moving time to move it around. So I didn't see any patchiness here. Um, that's one good thing about it, but I, yeah, it's not my preferred method of blush or lip stain. All right, time for the highlighters. There's a pink highlighter, a gold highlighter, and a bronze. Now let's be real here. Um, I'm probably going to use the gold. I might mix the gold and the pink together. The pink is very pink. It's not just one of those highlighters that you apply and it gives an iridescent pink to your face. It's like one of those highlighters that change the color of your face. I might put a little bit on just to show you what I mean. Um, but I don't like these types of highlighters. So you put it on and it almost gives you the pink iridescence, which is nice, but it almost makes your face look ashy. And I just don't, I don't like that. It doesn't look flattering on my skin. Um, I do have more sort of light olive undertones. So it sort of clashes with my skin. This is, this lighting is killing me today. So I don't like that. It looks powdery on me. So I'm going in with the gold on top of that just to sort of bring back some color to my skin i'm struggling with the lighting today guys sorry it's just an overcast day and the light comes in and out it's a problem with filming in natural light but this is a nice color combination actually it looks more like my skin tone it does give a pretty effect on the skin but it's nothing super like unique and something that you must have. I'm going to put a little bit of the gold on my nose. So it's just a nice, it's an okay highlighter. So yeah, they're not horrible highlighters. I just don't need them in my life. I've got them though. Um, and I, I don't like that on its own. That will be too dark for me on its own. So for me, I have to use the gold or mix the other ones, which is not bad. And mixing the gold and the um, pink actually give a really beautiful sort of um, sort of my skin toned highlighter, which I quite like. So they're not bad. They're just not fantastic in my opinion. But if you do want something from the collection and this inspires you, then, you know, it's not bad. All right. So we've done eyes, we've done cheeks. Everything's looking okay. It's not like an amazing look, but it's, everything's quite functional. It's quite looking quite pretty. I'm not scared to leave my house, which is great. Um, but I'm really excited to now use the lipsticks. All right, so I've just sort of uh, cleaned my lips because I had some foundation marks going on. Uh, and I'm gonna apply Sansa Stark, which is a sheer peach nude shade. So it's not designed to be an opaque shade. So this is very comfortable and it's very, very sheer. So that makes your lips look really healthy. It's more like a tinted balm, if anything, um, but it is pretty. And I kind of like the bold eyes with a really sheer lip. I also think the color and the finish suits the character. So I quite like this, but it is like a glorified tinted lip balm. And it is so sheer that I do think you need to clean your lips before you apply it, because if you have any foundation marks or anything, it's not, it doesn't cover it. It, it. You can see your lips completely through it. It's like a true sheer lipstick, but it's very pretty and looks very, very healthy. All right, next is Cersei Lannister and it's a, a metallized finish. This is like a bronze color. I love brown lipsticks, but I really don't like metallic finishes. So this is the one lipstick that I would have easily skipped if I had to buy them individually. So let's apply this one. All right, I'm 
I don't like this, but at the same time, I like it better than when we swatched it. Because in the swatch video, it looked very, very streaky, whereas it doesn't apply very streaky. I love the brown color. I just don't like the metallic finish. I just think for me, it looks a little bit messy, similar to how I don't like pencil liners uh, on the top uh, lash line. I feel like that looks messy. This to me looks really messy. So I'm gonna actually try to blend it in a bit. Yeah, even blotted down, I don't like. Um, it's just not a finish for me. I like the color though. I think the color's really pretty. And I think if you do like metallic lips, especially if you have deeper skin, this color would be gorgeous. I just don't like the finish of metallic lips, but the color is quite nice and it does apply very bold. All right, I don't know why Urban Decay do this and they tend to do this with a lot of their co collections. We've got another metallized version. This is Daenerys Targaryen and this is a metallic red. Uh, from swatches, this doesn't look as metallic as Cer Cersei Lannister, so I feel like this one might be a bit better, but let's have a look. So that's definitely a metallic, but it looks more like a shine than it does a metallic. So the last one looked very, very metallic. This one looks more like it's a shiny red. I don't hate this, but I would have preferred it to be a matte red. I think a matte red would have looked much more badass. Um, this looks a little bit costume in my opinion, so it's not my favorite. But if you did like a glossy sort of red lip without it being a sticky gloss, you know, you get that similar effect with this. I just, I don't love it. I feel like I'd need to go in with a lip liner and really make it look defined because like I said before, I just feel like metallic finishes look a little bit messy on me. They look a little bit smeary because they don't have that defined bold look. They kind of just look a little bit, a little bit messy. All right, the last lipstick is this dark berry color and it is White Walker and it's a comfort matte. I would have liked to have seen more comfort mattes in this range. I don't know why they need to be two metalized finishes. They're probably the least popular finishes in all of their lipstick range, so I don't get it. Um, but let's apply this one. All right, this is actually a really pretty lip. It's a matte, so it actually looks really bold and really striking. Um, and it's a beautiful berry shade. It's very purple red berry. There's no like brown tones in it. So it is very, very vampy. Um, I have heard someone say on Instagram that this doesn't wear very well, but I feel like these kind of shades being a comfort matte formula that doesn't like sit on the lips, and become budge proof. These sort of shades always wear a little bit funny. You gotta babysit them because once they start wearing off, they look very noticeable compared to like a nude. So I think out of the lipsticks, um, I do like Sansa Stark, probably the best followed by this one, just because it's a beautiful shade. Um, yeah, you probably have to touch it up as you eat and drink and whatnot, but at least it looks very striking on the lips and it doesn't look messy like the metalized versions. Um, it looks very striking and it's actually a very, very beautiful color. So, um, those two are my favorite lipsticks. All right, so that is everything on my face. Um, the only thing I didn't use out of this box set is the brushes, and that's simply because I view these as being more of a collector's item. So I'm not actually going to use these brushes. Um, they're going to sit in the collector's box and look pretty. So overall, I think this collection is quite usable um, and Look, it's it's funny because I know when this was announced, a lot of Game of Thrones fans were like, I'm very, very disappointed in this collection. And I was a little bit like, oh yeah, I'm disappointed in some things, but I like other things. I want the eyeshadow palette. I want a couple of lipsticks. The eyeliners look good. And I still feel like based on that first impression that I had, I sort of feel... I still feel the same way. Um, do you need the full set if you're a Game of Thrones fan? Well, it depends on how big a fan you are. I'm actually, even though I don't like two of the lipsticks and I don't like um, the highlighter palette so much, I'm actually really happy that I have this because I'm a massive Game of Thrones fan and I'm a massive makeup fan, obviously. So this is like two worlds collide. Could they have done it slightly better? Of course they could have, but they could have done it 10 times worse as well. So, so I definitely don't hate this collection. I'm not hating on it. And I do think that once you use the items, they're actually pretty usable. They're not the 
best like it's not like oh my god this is the next best makeup item you have to have it um i think if there's anything that stands out as being very unique and almost like something that even non-fans can buy and really appreciate them is some of the eyeliners like especially that gold one's gorgeous um and that blue one's supreme like the um when i put on my waterline that sort of teal gorgeous bright blue so i feel like there are some things in here that even non game of thrones fans can appreciate but overall um this is a makeup collection for game of thrones fans if you don't get the references or you don't like the packaging because you don't watch the show you don't need these things the highlighter palette even though those two shades mixed are very pretty no one needs another highlighter palette in their collection. Um, the eyeshadow palette, I think, is actually one of the strongest elements. I do want to use it more, and I do want to try more nude looks and more purple looks and whatnot. They're not the best quality in the world, but at the same time, they're very usable. And if you're familiar with Urban Decay formula, these are quite similar. They're not a letdown, but they're not like mind-blowingly amazing. I think some shades in there probably are. That blue on the lower lash line is gorgeous and i feel like um from playing with these the other day and swatching them i think there are some other shades in there that can be like beautiful and really unique but overall if you're not a game of thrones fan you wouldn't buy that palette it is what it is the lipsticks i think and i think the lipsticks and the highlighter palette are probably the weakest things because i can tell that that's where um, urban decay had most influence in um and there's it loses a lot of Game of Thrones um, sort of inspiration. I don't know why they have to throw metalized finishes in a, co like a collection when people don't really want metallic lipsticks. And it's probably, what, like I said before, one of the least popular finishes from their range. So why are they forcing it on this collection? Why are two out of four of them metalized? I don't understand. I just don't understand. The highlighter palette, even though it is practical and you can use it, it's just not inspired by Game of Thrones at all. It's like they're using excuses to make it, to put it in the collection. So I think some things um, just seem like throwaway items. Like we just wanted to push our highlighter formula in a collection. So let's make a palette. Uh, we want to push our metalized finishes in stuff. So let's make two lipsticks i feel like it was urban decay pushing things that they want to become more popular from their range um, into a collection that they know people will buy regardless which i think is a little bit dodge i think if they actually made this red a vibrant matte fire red i think it would have once again even non-fans probably would have wanted to buy this if it was so gorgeous but it's just eh. and i think also this sort of bronze color if they made this a sheer sort of uh brownie nude with a little bit of sparkle they could have had that sort of shimmery effect and that sort of vibe that like i'm royalty and i like gold and bronze and stuff you could have had that vibe but a lot more wearable so i just feel like that they missed the mark with some of the execution of it so overall i don't think you need everything in this unless you're like me and you want everything for collector's sake and then you actually won't be disappointed because it's kind of special, even though it's not perfect, if that makes sense. I'm not going to reach for these lipsticks every day anyway. I bought them as a collector's item. So for me, I'm not disappointed in this range. I'm not upset I bought it. I would actually be upset if I missed out on it. So I'm glad I got it when I did. But if you did miss out, is this going to change your life? No, it's not. So I think it just depends on how big a fan you are and how serious you are about wanting to collect makeup that... Um, is sort of makes you happy because of the theme and not so much because of the uh, practicality of it and how often are you going to wear it. Like I'm not going to plan on panning any of these items soon because they're going to sit in a collector's box and I'm going to occasionally reach for them and, and apply them and be like, oh, it makes me think about Game of Thrones and that last season was fantastic. So for me, I think this is like it was worth my money, but I know that it's not going to be the same for everyone. So this is really a collection for the fans. If you're not a fan or you don't want to spend the money on it, it's not for you. It's not going to change your life having it, especially if you don't like Game of Thrones. You don't you don't need most of these things. The only things that are really unique are the eyeliners. So for me, um, I would have liked that they put more effort into it and made it something that you want to reach for these items every single day. But at the same time, like I'm not disappointed by it because I am such a big fan and I'm glad I have this. So if you're a makeup collector and you're a Game of Thrones fan, you, even if there are downfalls to this and even if there are little dings in the packaging and stuff, which there are, um, and you're like, I spent a lot of money. Why isn't it perfect? Um, you know, 
at the end of the day, if you're a huge fan and you love makeup, you will still be happy that you've got this in your collection. So, you know, it's one of those things that's gonna be very personal based on how much you like the show, how much you like the items, um, but it's not a collection for everyone, that's for sure. But I did quite like most things I put on my face. When I did order this pack, I had a bit of like, like buyer's remorse, but now that I've got it and I've played with it, and even, even with the faults, I'm, I'm glad I bought it. If I didn't buy it, I would have had major FOMO. So yeah, it's a weird one. All right, I just wanted to give a quick update on the lip situation. Uh, this is about three hours on from when I applied it and it is actually wearing really well. I went out, had a coffee, had some lunch um, and this surprisingly hasn't worn down um, patchy. It just wears off, uh, it just fades off like a stain. So um, this is actually a really nice berry lipstick. I would totally wear this normally. And um, I've just been thinking about it and I reckon when this collection launches in Australia, I'm gonna get a backup of the blue pencil the gold pencil. I can wear them in the daily basis and really enjoy them rather than worrying about using them up. This lipstick possibly could be one that would make that cut because I really like how it's faded down, but um, I don't wear dark berries too, too often. So I think having this as a one-off is totally fine, but I think the gold and that blue that I put in my waterline, I want more of it. I want more of it. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that weird one. Uh, this is available or some of these items are available online at Mecca from the 2nd of May. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.